Moving on, um, after we finish the uh, net ionic equations for question 14, um, question 16 talks about uh, the solubility for the chromate ion. And when you did that step, you would notice that uh, all of the uh, the spots where they formed solids, except for the ones uh, where you had potassium chromate and ammonium uh, chromate. All right, and so your solubility rule for that would be uh, all are insoluble except ammonium and then not specifically potassium but we generalize it to the all of those group one alkali metals you know so uh, that would be um, for question 16 and then moving on to 18 and these come in pairs 1819 we're writing the equation and then the net ionic equation the balanced equation and the balanced net ionic equation all right so uh, here we have HCl and NaOH all right, these will react, and just like any uh, double displacement, the hydrogen will move to the hydroxide, and we'll get H2O. Hydroxide is a negative one, hydrogen is a positive one, so we get our water. All right, and then we have NaCl. So there is the uh, reaction, of course, you have to put in the subscripts, and here it's it's very important to put this in exactly the way you observed it now remember the hcl is uh is actually um a compound it's it, it's naturally a, a a gas but it's dissolved into the water all right so just like um other things this would be aqueous because it's in water that acid is in water and then the sodium hydroxide, likewise, we're not talking about the solid pellets like we've seen before in the lab, but it's a solution. So it's dissolved in water. It's aqueous. Okay, so um, that's important to realize that the acids, wherever you see them, they will be aqueous as well as the, the uh, you know, all these, they're, they're in um, at least the acid and the base, they're in solution, so they are aqueous. All right, and the water, of course, is a liquid sodium chloride. It's produced, it's in the, uh, it's already dissolved, so that will also be aqueous. All right, so that's uh, what it would look like there. We even have a balanced equation, and um, so then the net ionic equation, you're just canceling out all of the spectator ions, right? So you're going to separate these. You have the hydrogen, the chloride ion, sodium, the hydroxide ion, and then the water is not um, an uh, ionic compound. It's not aqueous. So we're going to leave that one together. It'll just be H2O liquid. And then we split the sodium and the chloride cancel out those spectator ions and what you'll find is the sodium and the chloride are both uh, on both sides of the equation so they'll cancel out and you'll have the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions to form the liquid water okay that would be the net ionic equation. Now for the sodium carbonate and HCl, when this produced, you'll remember this one um, produced bubbles, right? But we look at this and we, we see, okay, there's our NaCl, right? So we have some NaCl in there and a hydrogen joins up with carbon, the carbonate ion and we get hydrogen carbonate, right? But anytime, or more appropriately called carbonic acid, and, uh, but anytime we form carbonic acid, you know, H2CO3, instead of H2CO3, we know that um, 
is actually uh, it actually breaks down immediately into water and carbon dioxide okay so we don't actually include this in our equation we're just including the water and the carbon dioxide and uh, in, there are some hints in Chem 21 that lead you to that okay and these are the bubbles that you observe that carbon dioxide so that's your gas okay the water is again a liquid and the sodium chloride as before it's dissolved so it's aqueous right the acid just like before it's in solution so it's aqueous and the sodium carbonate we started with the solid sodium carbonate okay this is important so you're gonna put that as a solid even though this is a soluble compound um, we used it not in a solution we used it in its solid form where it remained together so in our net ionic equation we leave this one together because we used it as a solid so we're, we're writing each of these in the form that we use them okay oh and I'm uh, jumping around a little bit I meant to go and do this one first but uh, I'll come back to that um, but anyway just the way that we use the uh, the substance that's the way we write it we used it as a solid it wasn't dissolved in the solution yet and so we put it in even in the net ionic equation as a solid and then we have the uh, hydrogen ions and the chloride ions um, and I haven't balanced this equation I apologize I should have done that first but uh, we have two sodium ions over here so I need two of them over there that gives me two chloride I need two chloride that gives me my two hydrogen ions which I um, have All right. so now that it's balanced I'm gonna have a two there and the two there from from that okay and then on the right side my sodium chloride is soluble okay um, which means since I've I'm adding water here so on the right side in my products everything dissolved right so my uh, sodium ions are now and, and chloride ions Two going to each of those those are in solution they're aqueous All right and then I have my liquid water that one um, we leave as a liquid just the way it is and the carbon dioxide gas we leave just the way it is All right so that's our total ionic equation we cancel out all the spectator ions we see two chloride ions here two chloride ions there and everything else is uh, it remains in our total ionic or rather in our net ionic equation All right so the only thing the only spectator ion we have is that chloride ion and um, we're left with the solid sodium carbonate with the hydrogen ions to form sodium ions water and carbon dioxide all right and uh, pay attention to your coefficients as well when you put that in to chem 21 all right so going back to uh, question 21 and 22 for the iron sulfide and uh, HCl this one it uh, it gives you a clue um, if you look at the uh, the answer for this um, or, or rather when you work the problem um, you will see that uh, it <coughs> gives you part of it to uh, to begin with okay it because and the reason it does that is because iron combines with chloride to form two different compounds it can either be Fe uh, Cl2 where iron has a positive 2 charge or it could be FeCl3 where iron has a positive 3 charge so it gives us this formula telling us that that is the one and then our other compound is formed from the H and the S 
and hydrogen has a positive 1 charge, sulfur has a negative 2, so that's going to be H2S. All right, so uh, let's balance this before I forget here, and just that simple. All right, so there's our equation. Of course, we have to put in this state of matter. The iron sulfide was a solid, you'll recall. That was the, the little rocks. And then we had the acid, which is aqueous. The acid, uh, acids and, and bases, when they're in this solution like that, what we use them, um, those are aqueous. And then this was um, uh, in the solution also that was uh, formed. It formed a solution. Um, this is a soluble compound, so we know since we're adding water and that's soluble, that one is going to be aqueous, right? And then the hydrogen sulfide, this was that smell, remember the rotten egg smell? That was the hydrogen sulfide, and that we smelled because it was a gas, okay? So it produces that gas, that's a, a key point there. All right, so, and then for the net ionic equation of this one, we're just looking at this, okay, it's a solid, so we're writing it as a solid. We leave it just the same. The acid, we will break apart to H plus and then to Cl minus. Ions require water to separate them, so they're always going to be aqueous. And then the iron uh, chloride, iron 2 chloride, is aqueous um, because that's a soluble compound. Remember now we have two chloride ions because of that two there. When this dissociates, we get two chloride ions um, from it. Okay, And then the H2S is a gas. It's a molecule. It doesn't dissociate because there's no water when it goes in out as a gas when you're smelling it. So we leave that one together just like that. So here once again, it's just those chloride ions that are our spectator ions. Everything else will remain in our net ionic equation. All right. This uh, last one uh, here that I'm going to do, I'm just picking a, a few of, of these. I don't uh, I think from this you will be able to do the other ones a little bit uh, easier. Um, but here we have the ammonium chloride solution, okay? So it's aqueous. It's not, not talking about the solid stuff. We used a solution, another solution of sodium hydroxide. So we know it has water in it, right? And these formed certain products, okay? So we have the cation. We'll combine with the anion from the other one. And that gives us, well, first, let's just do the sodium chloride from those two. And then we have this NH4OH, ammonium hydroxide, okay? But what happens is um, instead of NH4OH, very similarly to this other case where we have carbonic acid breaking down to water and carbon dioxide, this compound is is actually ammonia, so let me say, uh, like I did last time, this breaks down to ammonia and HOH, or water. Okay, so again, we don't write it in this form, we write it in this form, right? And uh, our salt is, since we have water here, our salt is going to be in solution um, and the water will be liquid okay and the ammonia is remember that's the one that uh, you smell it like ammonia it has that smell um, indicating that it is in the gas state all right um, so uh, so that gives you uh, that um, basic outline there and then once again you just go back and you look okay the aqueous ones that means it's a soluble compound 
and in my solution I'm going to separate that into ammonium ions and chloride ions, sodium ions, hydroxide ions, sodium ions, chloride ions, and, uh, and then I have these two. Right? So what you'll find is the sodium ions and the chloride ions are spectators. You'll have ammonium ions plus hydroxide ions form ammonia, gas, and water liquid. Right? And then just don't forget to put in all your little charges everywhere. And even for these compounds, if it's not already given in there, you have to set those to a zero. All right. So this should hopefully help you with uh, these, uh, some of those last problems there in that next section, the net ionic equations for, uh, for those other reactions. Um, and, uh, and then there's another section uh, remaining, which I'll cover in the next video.